Hello, beautiful Taurus, and welcome to July 2020. This is a month for the for the history books, I think, in so many ways. I mean, I think this year is is one of those years we're all going to remember. But July is powerful, and we're going to be riding some really powerful waves of clarity, of honesty, of integrity this month that if you've been leaning in over the last few months, you're going to find it to be, you know, nothing totally shocking. It'll be mostly things that I think you'll be leaning into already and understanding and just growing into more deeply. If you've been resisting a little bit, you may be feeling more of that, that kind of overwhelm um, that can come from it. We're all going through this kind of moment of deep honesty in July and deep integration and deep understanding and deep choosing to show up to those things that nurture and help and heal ourselves and others. So there is just this integrity vibe going on with July. Um, and let me tell you why. We're on July 1st, Saturn is moving right back to Capricorn. So we had a little taste of Saturn and Aquarius since March. Now we're going to go visit Saturn and Capricorn one more time until December. Now we've been working with Saturn and Capricorn energy for a while. Uh, and for you all, it's been in your ninth house of your big vision and what you wanna build in this life and what you want that to look like. There's been a huge revision process going on, not only with Saturn and Capricorn, but also with Uranus and Taurus. We also have a full moon in Capricorn and a partial lunar eclipse uh, happening on July 5th. So the first week of this month is very Capricorn heavy and we are doing some review around what we have learned with Saturn and Capricorn over the last few years. We are really sitting with those lessons and taking them in completely. Death. <laughs> Taurus, you never cease to amaze me with the power of these readings, I tell you what. Transformation is afoot, my friends. It just is. It's just, it's such a natural, innate part of this process of existing. Um, so, we're reviewing, you know, this is where this energy coming back in, we've changed shape, we've changed understanding of who we are and how we're moving through this world. And we don't fit the way we used to and we're not going back there. And so we're going to feel a little bit of this sense of like, yeah, I'm not I don't want to keep doing things the way we've been doing them. I don't want to keep this austere clamp down on my own individual life as well as our collective journey. And so there's a really deep understanding going on there. It's like, oh, no, we're not we're not going back there. No. No, we're not doing that. No. And so it's a powerful week of that kind of that kind of skin shedding, that kind of understanding, that kind of like knowing at a deep level. We also have Chiron going retrograde in Aries in your 12th house until December. So this is all about healing, reconnecting with your spiritual voice, Knight of Swords. Um, we have, we're working with cancer season most of this month. So that's third house, you know, your throat chakra, how you express, how you move, how you express yourself. Now, this is interesting because Mercury retrograde is happening in cancer until July 12th, and then it goes direct. So this is a time to review five of cups. <laughs> this is a time to review, you know, how you want to use your voice, how you want to be in the world. Eight of wands. Okay. Y'all are going on an oscillation journey here, my friends. I love it. I actually really love it, weirdly enough. King of Swords. Uh, yeah, so this is a time to really deeply release anything that's that feels like you're needing to clamp down or feel like you're needing to make yourself small again. This is a huge month for that Taurus, huge. Um, with Mercury going direct in Cancer, with another new moon in Cancer on July 20th. And then we move into Leo season, your fellow or, uh, fixed sign, Queen of Pentacles, which moves you into fourth house energy, right? Of your intimate spaces, of what nourishes you from the inside out, what mothers and nourishes you in that beautiful fourth house way. So Leo season is, I think, Page of Pentacles, a very supportive season for you to feel that you are really grounding in and building from the inside out and feeling nurtured, not just on the surface, but deep down. Okay, so yeah, we're going through a journey, my friends, and I love you all so much. 
And it, it is. It's just it's just a powerful month. It just is. It's it's getting perspective, right? It's like being able to really see and understand what's just happened and also who we are now. So yeah, we start right off with death. Um, now, this is one of my favorite energies to work with. Um, just as much as there is this heralding, there is also a, a rising sun in this card. It's the number 13. It is in the, almost in the exact middle of the major arcana arc. So it is not an ending. This card is directly associated with the beginning. It's also associated with your opposing sign of Scorpio. So you always have a connection to this card, even though you are the, the card of like birth and fertility. Um, death is this innate part of that process, right? And so you always, even though on the surface, Taurus, you're all about the beautiful things, there's also a, a deep, dark part of yourself that is very tied to this energy. Now, I like this because with that full moon in Capricorn and with that Saturn returning to Capricorn, this is a great time to realize, oh my gosh, I am really different. I really have changed. In fact, I've changed so much and every time you lean into that change you welcome big news big swift new energy moving through it's interesting these horses are facing each other I think every time we lean into our not knowing and we lean into the realization that we are just not the same we don't even know exactly what that means something a fresh breeze blows in every time and a fresh sense of knowing and a fresh <laughs> messenger comes blowing right through, charging forward into our world. And that's what I'm seeing here. So, you know, you may feel a little bit turned around the first couple weeks of July. You may feel like, ooh, I, I kind of know. I know exactly what's going on with me, and I also don't know at all. Um, and, you know, it comes back again. <laughs> five of Cups and Eight of Swords. Yeah, Five of Cups is a grief card. Absolutely. And it's important. I think it's important as we change and we grow that we take time to grieve. That we take time to be with our emotions, to be with our process. You may be finding that pieces are shifting in your life. It doesn't always have to be traumatic. You know, if you are going through something really hard, my love to you, you know, absolutely. My total love to you. Um, life is full of things that feel so beyond our control. It doesn't necessarily have to herald hard events. It can also herald just when we realize we are no longer the same. And you do just kind of grieve who you've been and what something meant to you, right? You do just kind of take a moment to let yourself feel fully. But guess what? You lean back into that feeling. You're met immediately with the swift energy of eight of wands, which is an energy of movement. I've always nicknamed this card the flying, the magic carpet, because it's so fast. It's like suddenly you're on this magic carpet ride that is taking you to like this next location. Like the pieces are moving so quickly. You don't even know like how to logically place everything that's going on. That's very much what's going on here in eight of wands. Uh, suddenly the pieces are moving and suddenly decisions are being made and suddenly all these things are occurring. And so you do have this oscillation between kind of going inward and feeling deep emotions and then big spurts of energy moving you outward. And I think to trust yourself in that process, right? One of the messages that came through for me in July for you all, as I was feeling through your energy, was that you're getting really good waves of energy about short-term vision and long-term vision, both. Not just one or the other, but both. So you're going to be getting, so maybe your short-term vision is, ooh, I need to like heal and process this. Ooh, I need to feel this emotion. But you're also getting these hits of long-term energy, which is like, whoa, I'm about to change all these things in my life. Or whoa, I'm a, I, these are all the things that are going to be happening to me as I move through this. So both things are happening at the same time and they're both getting activated for you. And it's something to just kind of keep in mind that they can both be playing at the same time, there's not really a choosing there. And so I'm seeing that kind of um, dynamic process happening with you. It's a very organic dynamic process that I like to actually see. Because when I see this happening, I'm seeing, I'm seeing somebody and I'm seeing an energetic state where you're fully tapped in to all aspects of yourself. And you're not trying to selectively choose and curate what it is that you're doing in life. You're feeling it all. Um, now, as we ease our way 
out of the Mercury retrograde, out of the eclipse season, and into Leo, we start to see some really nourishing energy for you all. And this is what I like. I feel like there's this shedding, there's this release, there's this kind of like lightening up of your emotional load. And that is then allowing you to start building some seeds in that magical fourth house of the most intimate. Um, that's where these top three cards are so powerful. King of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles. Oh yes. So first of all, King of Swords brings us clarity, right? He always brings us some really good communication, some really sharp, clear information. This is very fair and just energy. If you are working with air sign energy at all, that's showing up here for sure. But this is so much more than that. This is about a knowing, the kind of knowing you can't unknow. The King of Swords is very tied to cards like justice. And um, there's a sense of there being this balance, this clarity and this knowing, right? And here's the, the short term, long term vision coming quite literally <laughs> to show you the path. Part of that short term, long term vision has to do with nurturing has to do with the things that nourish your soul. I think we often think we need to be wanting splashy, wild, crazy empire building wishes in order to be fully alive and that that should be what we always desire. But when we get to those heights of those really adrenaline filled experiences, what do we crave right afterwards? We crave the things that hold us and nourish us. And these are the things that we are always seeking as beings. Don't care who you are. These are the really important things right here. Um, we sometimes want to deny that that's true. But in this case, these are the building blocks of your life. Now, you are getting some really deep nourishment here. These are all about, yes, um, good health news, right? Nourishing and building up your health, nourishing and building up how you connect to your body and how you connect to your routines around your body and how you connect to all of that. So beautiful. This is also about infusions of opportunity of financial and practical things that are going to be holding you and, and keeping you through. These are also about like firm, real commitments, right? It's not about the air or water energy that sometimes is about an emotional conversation or an idea. This is about something concretely coming into being as well. And it is slower building. You know, when you're working with earth energy as Taurus, you all know you're building slowly. You're using the, the logic of something that percolates underground and shoots up through the earth. Um, and takes its time to do so. So these, this may be a time of culminating when it comes to something that's been under the earth for a little while. Um, and it's just been taking its time to fully bloom. And you know, often these things do occur when we fully release and we go through the catharsis that is here. So I'm not really surprised, especially because like I said, the beginning of this month is very much tied to that type of energetic exchange where we understand how we have changed and we feel it fully and then we move forward into what really nourishes us and i think that's such an exciting interesting conversation to be having right now there's a lot of, that we are needing to dismantle and really look at and grieve and feel emotions about um, and really show up to and there's also a part of this conversation that i think we're going to be noticing we are leaning more and more into which is how do we want to start nourishing each other how do we want to start helping each other you know how do we want to start living a life what what nourishing things do we want in this physical world now for ourselves for our loved ones and for our communities right and that is such an interesting and intriguing part of the discussion that i am excited to see um, coming from all of us as we start to build um, it's, it's just one part of the puzzle, but it's a part of the puzzle that's really getting me excited as we step into July and as we do our review with Saturn and Capricorn, we're all gonna be like, okay, we understand what needs to be stripped back. We do, and we need to do that work. Also, what nourishes us? And I'm seeing that deeply for you here, my Tauruses. And there's some deep questioning and some deep clarity that comes from this month and the work that we are doing. Whew. Oh my gosh, I love you all so much. I know you have been on a wild ride in these last 
uh, this last several months. It's been really powerful energy in Taurus and what you are working with right now. I would love to see you over on Patreon where we are going a lot deeper into all of these big transits, into eclipse season, into how to work with all of this. We do weekly discussions uh, and I do worksheets and all sorts of great resources that are there for a really affordable price. You also get to learn a little bit more about me and my own like personal process as just a human being um, and not just as a leader or a teacher. So if you want to get a little bit closer, it's a great community. I'd love to see you over there. And thank you to those of you who have already joined. You mean so much to me. I can't even tell you. Uh, you can also find me on my website and on Instagram at Sarah Verba. And of course, you can find Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry, my beautiful Taurus friend, uh, on her Etsy shop as well. I'm sending you all so much love, truly. Have a beautiful July. I'm sending you all the blessings and well wishes I have in my heart. Uh, take such good care of yourself during these really powerful times, and I will talk to you in August.